what i guess that there are uh, very high speed servers huh. where this data is stored do you think everywhere the data is coming from one single server so when you watch the netflix or youtube video you must have noticed in the starting some buffering happens yes, right yes yes so how do you think the quality gets auto adjusted by itself so papa how do you view content online can you please elaborate what do you mean by how do i view it so there's a lot of content available right like there are texts there are videos there are images how do you think you view it like in terms of software engineering perspective okay if there is a need hmm. i type it on google or youtube content matter or the video comes there and i go and watch it otherwise there is a pop up to some channels i have subscribed and if it interests me then i go and watch it so today we will discuss how you actually watch videos say on youtube so i'll explain you in terms of software engineering perspective how you are able to actually do it that will be too interesting i think abhi yeah! baja aayega na bidu before we go ahead i would just like to tell you that if you are interested in understanding systems like this it is actually awesome because it is very important to understand these systems to become a better software developer plus if you have say 1 to 2 years of experience you will have a dedicated interview round for high level system design so you cannot crack any big companies without actually cracking high level system design round so you need to understand how systems work so for that i have launched a course where i'll be explaining all the topics from the beginning the entire curriculum is mentioned on the site the site name is kirtipurswanicourses.com the link is in the description i have mentioned the week by week curriculum in detail it's very very beginner friendly i am covering all the topics from say scratch so even if you have no idea about lld about any systems you should be able to follow because it's going to be extremely beginner friendly i'm going to explain everything from scratch just like how i'm trying to explain to my father i'm going to try to explain in very easy terms but i'm going to take you to advanced level so that you are able to crack the interviews i'll also give you tips to crack the high level system design interviews rest everything is mentioned on this site so do check it out and if you still have any questions i'm here to answer all the questions okay let's get back to the interesting video now firstly i would like to ask that there must have been times where you actually download the video and you are able to watch it even when you are offline right yes why not so how is that different in terms of software engineering than say watching videos on youtube practically speaking i'll not be able to spell out the difference because most of the times i have watched online only when sometimes i am in flight and i have to download some video i only know that it gets downloaded into some disk or software uh, hardware and i am able to watch it right so when you download it it has actually come to your memory like of, yes, me of yes. the device it occupies the memory yes, of the device yes so Certainly. it's basically some form of data that is there in your device right? 100% 100% uh, but when you're watching online how do you think the like so much of data coming to you like can you guess how it happens what i guess that there are uh, very high speed servers huh. where this data is stored huh. this is what i know roughly huh. and it takes uh, practically a fraction of seconds to fetch the data the content gets streamed and uh, we are able to watch it correct so you used a lot of terms over here firstly you said servers so, so there is some data stored in a server somewhere because i am aware of this terminology at correct. least <laughs> okay first let's talk about this so you said there is some data present on some server server yeah. is basically a computer somewhere out there right yeah. now imagine that there is a server say in us or say we are sitting in bangalore and the server is in delhi don't you think it is very far and like the amount of time it takes for the data to reach you should be a lot more than a few seconds um, really i have never thought in this context but looking into the advancement of the technology i think you people have come up with innovative ways where it takes only fraction of seconds uh, that we are able to watch it so suppose even there is a live video live event happening hmm. say a live cricket match hmm. live hockey match or the live telecast of uh, modi's visit are hum to fakir aadmi hai jhola leke chal padenge ji just for example hmm. uh, almost it is uh, we see it without any time gap correct so we are trying to understand how that happens okay okay so uh, firstly let's try to understand that how the gap is like of a few seconds right so say a netflix video or a movie say is uh, like it is being watched in mumbai in delhi in bangalore in so many places do you think everywhere the data is coming from one single server i don't have idea but for the safety and backup purposes there would be definitely one main server where the data is stored and there'll be at least two three backup servers also correct 
See, because the data has to come from a server, yes. wouldn't it be better if like the geographical distance of the server from you is actually lesser? Like then the latency would be less and you would be able to see with even more time difference, right? Uh, Kirti, I beg to disagree with you. No. <laughs> because uh, the distance doesn't matter. The server may be in US and that uh, event is being televised worldwide. But in the end data is being transmitted how? That I am not aware of. In the end it is all cables somewhere, right? Certainly. Then obviously Cab the distance... Cables of satellite. Yes. yes. Even if it is in seconds, distance does matter, right? It should matter, but it doesn't... Um, you people have come up, uh, software experts have come up with ideas or maybe methods where it uh, hardly matters. So exactly, so you don't even come to know about it, but what actually happens is that one uh, data is present in multiple servers in multiple geographical locations. Okay. And so say if something is trending, a movie has just come up and we know that in which parts it will be watched more. So in those servers, it will be say cached or it will be kept so that the geographical distance reduces oh. and you're able to watch it with less of effort. So this process of keeping data in many servers, this is called like content delivery network because it is a network work about how you're going to deliver the content. Okay. Content delivery network. Yes. This is a new term I have heard from It is course. called CDN and okay. it is actually one of the topics that I'm going to cover in my course, the High Level System Design interesting, course. Interesting, interesting. So, it's actually very much detailed, but okay. you understand the point that servers are present in many, many geographical locations and... And depends on where the content will be watched. Correct, okay. exactly. Okay, that makes it... Right. So this much you have understood. Yeah. Now let's see that how watching a video is different than say any other content, right? You must know that video is actually too many images combined. Certainly. Right? Certainly. So obviously the three hour movie or a, say a very uh, long series cannot be stored say as one data, right? So what happens actually is that it is divided into multiple parts. Okay. And it is sent to us in multiple parts. Okay. So when you watch the Netflix or YouTube video, you must have noticed in the starting some buffering happens, yes, right? Yes, yes. Does it happen again? Like no, later? No, it doesn't happen. So why do you think that happens? I don't have any idea. What, what is actually happening when you say streaming or buffering? What is Basically, happening? Basically, either it is fetching the data, what I've asked for. Right. So there are N number of, N is a very large quantity. So, so suppose I want to see a movie, hmm. by the time it fetches, some buffering takes place hmm. and then the movie starts and then there is no buffering until unless there is a network issue or something. Right. So, but it happens only the starting, it doesn't happen after that. It doesn't happen. Right. Uh, if there is a network issue, it may happen. Right. So Otherwise, it doesn't happen. If there is a network issue, it might happen, it right? Might. Yes. Okay. So, let's yes. try to understand what is actually happening. So basically what happens is that video is divided into many many packets or chunks, yes, right? Yes. So it, the chunks might be say of a few seconds depending on the, our strategy. But in the starting when we start watching the video for the first time, the first packet takes time. But what happens as you keep watching, the packets keep arriving beforehand. Okay. Right? Okay, Samaria. Samaria. That means there is some system designed as such, in such a way that say suppose packet 1 comes and the entire all the packets get skewed in the line of order. Yes, exactly. Oh, so you great. the packets are coming one by one, right? Great, great, so great. the 3 hour movie, it is actually coming in chunks, okay. say in a matter of a few seconds. So okay. that's how it happens. Okay. okay. Another interesting point, you must have noticed that while watching the video, sometimes the quality of the video drops <clears throat> and sometimes it is very good. Yeah. And you said depending on the network, network, it might stop in between. Yes. And depending on the network, if you have noticed on YouTube, there is like quality, right? There is some auto option that sometimes it can yeah, become yeah, yeah. 240p and yes, that, right? Yes. So how do you think the quality gets auto adjusted by itself? These technicalities definitely I will not be able to. Okay. I am not aware of it. Okay. Let me be very frank. So let me try to explain you in very, very easy Great. terms. I'm karte so suppose on a server, so you have a lot of packets, right? Now, firstly, what happens is that you took data compression. So what happens, say in a frame, so there is say a I three second. I know when the data is compressed, the quality also gets compromised. Correct. <laughs> but you have to compress it in a way so that the quality is not compromised. Let's see how we can do that. Okay. 
for example there is a 3 second frame in that i am just moving my hands i am okay. trying to explain it to you in yeah, a very yeah. easy way yeah. but mostly like my t-shirt is not moving so much my hair is not moving so much so that is actually not moving right so same bits can be reused so it gets compressed so that the quality is actually not compromised we reuse the data okay sort of okay so basically data is compressed but the quality is also maintained so after compressing we also encode the video what happens is that there are different quality levels as yes, we talked yes, about yes. right so we, we encode the video or the packets in different quality levels so there is a term called bit rate that is how many bits are you uh, going to use to store like a yeah. chunk of video yes right so if you use more bits that means the quality, quality is going is to better. be better Definitely. right Definitely. so what happens uh, that depending on the network connection that we have depending on the device capabilities you are going to switch to a different bit rate okay okay, okay. so okay. what happens is that on server side when we encode the video the video is stored at different quality levels at different bit rate but what happens when the video is getting recorded so that is recorded in a good quality okay. but when it is compressed it is comp for transmission purposes yes so it is stored in various quality levels now when you are watching say you have received one packet you have watched a chunk of the video okay. and the network is say going down now you know that the network is poor so in the next packet that will be received will be of a low quality lower quality it automatically gets adjusted yes. Okay, but Bit if there is no network issue, the original quality will continue yes. to be played. Yes. So this is called adaptive bitrate streaming. So you are adapting the bitrate change and you are streaming according. Got it. Got it. Adaptive bitrate streaming. Adaptive bitrate streaming. Yes. ABS, you call it or what? It's called ABR, but yeah, same thing. Okay. ABR. Huh. What is R, what does R stand for? Huh, same question. A lot of people have same questions, uh, but it is ABR stands. For. So, what have you understood till now? Can you recap it a bit? Uh, you explained to me first of all that depending upon the uh, area where the video is likely to be watched, you decide where the uh, data is to be stored. Servers are uh, the data is moved to the servers nearest to that place. And uh, you used a word CDN. CDN. CDN Content Delivery Network. Then you explained to me that how the quality gets automatically adjusted if there is a network issue, uh, and uh, data gets transferred in chunks. Not uh, and the buffering takes place in the be uh, beginning, and then automatically uh, it gets streamed. And you used adaptive uh, streaming something. Adaptive bitrate streaming. Bitrate streaming. Yes. What is bitrate? Bitrate is at the uh, speed the data is going to be uh, get transferred. Hmm. How much data? How many bits are you using yes. to store, say, a chunk of video? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So anything I missed or no, no, very okay. good, very okay. good. मजा आया. So we talked about how data is compressed, right? Hmm. So we also know that there is some coding decoding that is happening, right? Coding at certainly, the server certainly, side, certainly, decoding certainly, at the certainly, side. Certainly. So there are some codecs for that, basically coder decoder. So in the format in which it was encoded, it has to be decoded in the same format. Yeah, yeah. So roughly that's how the video streaming happens. Okay, okay. So you understood that how videos divide into packets, how you are able to view them. And why buffering happens? So, as you had said in the beginning, that if the network connection is poor, then if the video stops in between. So, if you have selected a particular quality and that is not possible for the bandwidth that you have, then it starts buffering, it stops, and it gets the data packet only when possible. Okay, great. Correct. Great. Yeah. Uh, but you said that uh, say so suppose I have selected high quality. And high quality streaming is not possible. Hmm. It automatically gets adjusted, or uh, I have to switch over to the low quality. So it depends on the system that you are using. System. So some systems they will automatically adjust. But if you have say on YouTube, you have said that you want to watch it at this quality level only. Okay. Then it will stop and it will buffer. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's auto, right? So it will auto adjust. Say in Prime, in Netflix, usually it is auto adjust. These types of questions, uh, of course, I have not uh, noticed on the YouTube or other channels. But uh, while transmitting uh, or sharing videos, even the uh, mobiles sometimes there's a pop-up. 
uh, that you want to transmit the data on the original quality or uh, compressed or something yeah yeah so that is, so that is dependent on the system that you are using so okay. if you are using youtube they have already uh, integrated that that if the connection is poor then you can just probably okay. show the pop up great, and great. so that happens by decoding so how was this video for you did you find it interesting definitely interesting and informative also learn something new today awesome thank you so much for thank being so proactive thank you for giving me this opportunity thank you okay thank you bye, bye.